Now, Bad Moon, I remember uh, renting that uh, just because I was like, hey, it's the guy who made Cohen and Tate. <laughs> That I think that's one of the best. I mean, it, and I see it online. People referring to it as one of the best uh, werewolf movies ever made because it's 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 really great. It, it's it's a really nice compliment, which is ameliorated slightly by the fact that there's only a couple of good werewolf movies. Most werewolf <laughs> movies are shit. They really are. If you look back for a monster as iconic as the werewolf, if you really look at the history of werewolf movies, there's maybe five good ones in my opinion. Um, what I loved about uh, Bad Moon was it was its mixture of a family story and a, and a horror movie. You know, it was kind of like a horror movie with heart. And that dog was such a was such a straight ahead hero. I mean, your rooting interest because that's how we feel about dogs. You know, that dog is amazing in that movie. Was it was it difficult uh, directing that dog and, and getting that performance out of it? Yes. Uh, well, it took a lot of patience um, because the it was a, it took a long time to cast the dog. Uh, it took us actually six months to find the right German Shepherd um, mm -hmm. uh, because shepherds all once you start looking at them for the hero role to find the shepherd that embodied all of those archetypal heroic protective loving you know elements that we associate with the German Shepherd and and, and could that that came across in camera. It took us a long time to find the dog. Mostly with that dog, it took uh, patience because it was a puppy. You know, he was, I don't, I think he was a year old when we were making the movie, you know, the, the close up dog. There were only, there were only uh, basically two dogs used in the movie. He had, he had an incredible ability to lock eyes with somebody and bond, what they call bonding. The, so that's where that, you know, those hugely emotional looks the dog gives. Um, that was something the dog projected, but he had the attention span of a gnat. I would roll a 10-minute magazine of film on that dog in a close-up to get maybe two or three usable seconds. But all you need were those two or three usable seconds. You know, once you had, you know, he would, the dog would look left and right, he'd scratch, he'd yawn, he'd blink, he'd scratch his ear, and then he would bond. And, you know, and, and when when he did that, when we go, you know, we had the trainer right behind the camera and we just spent 10, 20, 30 minutes getting these, getting the getting the moments. And then once you had that film, then it was a matter of putting the performance together in the cutting. But the dog gave it to you. You had a really good cast in Bad Moon. I mean, the the performances like Michael uh, Pere, I, I don't think I've ever seen him more effective in a movie, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure there was Eddie in the Cruisers, but but I mean, he's he plays that role really well. I always I always enjoyed his performance and Marielle Hemingway as well. Well, Michael in particular, you know, I, I think it was kind of a comeback film for him, and he really brought his A game to that. And and he's like that. I've worked with him twice now. Mike is one of these actors that no matter what movie he's making, he treats it like he, he, he approaches every movie and brings his best. And he had a, he has a wonderful quality of being, um, he, he's able to project performance through physicality, through expressions, you know, cause a lot of his uncle Ted and bad moon, there's whole scenes that are based on just looks between him and the dog. Um, Mike is really good at that. It, it, it's in Eddie and the Cruisers. He, you know, it, he has that similar kind of quality, this kind of animal magnetism. Um, he's a super skilled actor, uh, and he was also great in that he worked with the dog constantly. Um, which, if you're doing a movie with a dog, you and that's going to have a lot of scenes with your main character, it, it really, really helps if your actor spends a lot of time with the dog and develops, you know, a personal rapport, which Mike did. I love Ray. I, I, I've worked with him any time I can. Like when I've when I've when I've dealt with uh, quote unquote monsters, like say a werewolf. I mean, my first thought is to say, you know, why does this myth resonate? 
but you know what why why do we love werewolves why why it's like with vampires why is there why are we fascinated by it um and i guess with with werewolves i i felt that you know when you really think about it these are kind of an analogy for alcoholism you know somebody who's a decent person you know is but they they have this bad they're cursed they're bit you know and that uh you know the the werewolf in them the beast in them winds up kind of taking over their um you know taking away their humanity so um and then i thought like with bad moon that what was interesting about that i i didn't usually see in werewolf movies was the idea that the werewolfism so to speak would actually begin taking over the de- the 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 man who was turned into a werewolf during the day and michael michael's performance we 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 explored that i mean you see mm-hmm. as the movie progresses he's becoming less and less a loving brother and more some kind of sociopath uh, so that was very very deliberate in that to make the character even scarier because you kind of had two bites of the apple you had the guy becoming more dangerous so you find, you follow a, a you know you, you try to imagine a logic or at least i do Everyone, please check out Eric's work and his novels. He's got a great imagination. You can certainly escape in his work, so be sure to check it out. And so thanks again, Eric. Thanks, Mike. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.